Since we were able to look up at the sky, we wondered, what are those lights in the sky? And everybody has some kind of connection. It's so mysterious. It's so magnificent. It's so grand. How can anybody possibly ignore it? How can anybody not be interested <laughs> is the way I look at it. My earliest memory of being interested in astronomy was when I was eight years old living in Winnipeg. And my father took me outside and showed me the constellations Orion, uh, Ursa Major, and so on in the wintertime. And it's, it went from there. There is a link between my teaching human anatomy and my interest, for instance, in tadpole behavior. Okay? And what it comes down to is looking. You know, both, both of those are, are fields, that is, anatomy and behavior. You have to stop and look. You realize how puny everything is here and how petty people can be, I guess, so considering how small we are and how big the rest of the universe is. I'm not an astronomer, but I, I, ho I, I see them as quite privileged in being exposed to the, both the daily scale of their normal life and, and being looking up at night enough to appreciate the, the large scale and then to feel that they have a place in the universe. So you look at that galaxy in a different way than just a faint, fuzzy thing. It's, it's real. It's dynamic, it's vibrant, it's, a, it's, it's very much an alive thing when you make that um, photon connection. Take me to the station. In order to, and you know, to be doing good science, to be learning about new things that nobody ever saw or thought about before, you have, have to be no curious. Uh, in order to inspire others, you have to show that curiosity, you have to encourage that curiosity. We're talking about how do you train someone to be a good observer. Well, you're sitting there saying, Gee, I wonder why that animal is doing that. And they may not have been asking that question themselves. Then the, that, the question, the curiosity, inspires the interest. And from there, you can educate the public. I could not believe it. Going into a classroom and seeing the enthusiasm and the sort of kids just sort of bursting out of their skins because they just couldn't get enough and they're sucking it up like a sponge. And, and um, I've had teachers say to me, I don't know how you do it. I've never seen kids sit still for so long. You know, you just hold them in the palm of your hand for two hours. How do you do that? Kids in grade five. I don't write learned scientific articles on astronomy. I write popular articles. And I try to take my knowledge and get the essence of the topic and express it in everyday words to the best I can. Okay, and I'm going back to another theme. That is the curiosity for doing the science and the, the ability to communicate the science begins with a question. The question need be, need be only a single word, but why the question mark is a question. We want to know where we came from and how we got here and why we're here. Now, the why we're here thing, we're certainly still working on that, but we're getting a good idea now of how we got here. For me, being a scientist is more than just being a, f a profession. It's just the way I live my life. It's, you just go through life and you see things. And, if, they, if things excite you, you investigate them. I have no expectations to pass this way again.